Hello friends, family, and other creatures from the deep, dark internet. My name is Dr. Rice, also known as Dr. Mitch, and welcome to the video. Today, I'm excited to announce the launch of a brand new series called Ingredient Investigation, where I will be taking a look at common ingredients found in our food, diving into the literature, and seeing whether or not they're actually healthy for us at all. I'll be looking at the pros and the cons of each ingredient and then kind of doing a little bit of a summary at the end of each video. I will link all the studies to what I'm talking about in the description below so you can take a look for yourselves. So without further ado, the first ingredient that we will be kicking off this ingredient investigation is Stevia. Stevia is a very common sweetener that is quickly gaining popularity all around the world. It's a sugar substitute derived from the leaves of the stevia plant. Stevia is 100 to 300 times sweeter than regular cane sugar, but actually contains nearly zero calories, zero carbs, and no artificial ingredients. It sounds quite promising, so let's take a look and see if stevia is in fact healthy for us or not. The main ingredient that give stevia its sweet flavor are molecules called glycosides. The two most common glycosides found in stevia are rhabdiocide A as well as steviacide. This is a great segue into the benefits of stevia. So a very common misconception about sweeteners, whether they're artificial or naturally derived sweeteners, is that they hijack and trick your body into thinking that it's actually receiving real sugar or glucose, which subsequently causes a rise in our insulin levels and kind of hijacks the metabolic system in that way. This is a huge misconception that I wanna debunk here because that's simply not the case. Stevia doesn't affect overall blood glucose levels or blood insulin levels. The reason it doesn't affect these two parameters is because it has a zero on the glycemic index. The glycemic index is essentially a tool that grades foods based on the degree or proportion that they raise your blood glucose levels. So anything over 70 on this scale will significantly raise your blood glucose levels, and then anything less than 50 doesn't really have that much of an impact on these levels at all. So stevia being a zero, it means that it has absolutely no effect on blood glucose levels, which in turn has no net effect on insulin levels. One may astutely deduce that because stevia doesn't actually have an impact on your overall blood glucose levels, it could be a reasonable substitute to get that sweet, delicious taste in other foods without having to spike your glucose or insulin levels. This obviously saves you quite a bit of calories. There indeed have been studies showing that stevia is good for diabetics as this does not raise blood glucose levels and actually helps lower the blood glucose levels over time. There have also been studies out there that have shown stevia to be highly correlated with weight loss, which again, this makes sense if you're using something that has essentially no calories and no carbohydrates, you're not going to intake as many calories leading to weight loss. And while this does sound absolutely amazing and kind of like a fix for those sugar craves that you're having, especially right now, there are quite a few problems with stevia itself. Stevia on its own is actually a greenish, darkish tint rather than the white powder that it traditionally comes as. The problem occurs with how specific companies process the stevia. They usually combine it with other things such as sugar or sugar alcohols that can wreak havoc on your metabolic system. Also, another fun fact, anything that weighs less than 0.5 grams mixed in food, companies don't actually have to include this on food labels. So the chemicals that are used by companies in order to turn stevia into that white process, as well as get rid of some of the bitter aftertaste, don't actually have to be included in the labels. These molecules can have a significant degree of impact on individuals' health, especially in people who are highly susceptible to them. I wanna take a look at four major companies to just break down some of the ingredients to see that they tend to slip in some extra stuff in order to make stevia 
that much sweeter. Stevia in the raw uses a combination of stevia and maltodextrin, which is actually the highest sugar on that glycemic index. Truvia uses stevia and combines it with erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol that again can cause problems not only in the gut, but also metabolic dysfunction. Sweet Leaf uses stevia and inulin, which is a molecule that I will talk about in the future, and there's not a lot of good news to say about inulin. And then Pure Stevia actually uses stevia combined with natural flavors, and if you wanna know more about natural flavors and how they're actually not that natural at all, click on this video here in the top corner. No, just kidding. Wait till the end and click on the video at the end, as well as in the description below. The bottom line is that the way stevia is processed doesn't make it that good for you, and that if you're gonna try stevia at all, you should try to get 100% pure stevia, not combined with any other additives. However, let's talk now about the cons of stevia. So stevia has been shown to alter the gut microbiome, which can lead to metabolic dysfunction, as well as cause mood instability, leading to higher rates of anxiety and depression. At high doses, stevia has found to be mutagenic, which is basically just a fancy word for saying it alters DNA. However, the studies that looked into this were specifically at very high doses of stevia that we probably wouldn't consume on a daily basis. There was a meta-analysis, which is essentially a study that studies other studies. Basically a study that looked at a lot of other studies that had to do with stevia, as well as other non-nutritive sweeteners, including artificial sweeteners. This meta-analysis found that non-nutritive sweeteners as a whole cause increased weight gain as well as increased waist circumference, as well as higher incidences of obesity, hypertension, metabolic dysfunction, type two diabetes, and cardiovascular events such as heart attacks. There's also been studies showing that stevia interferes with certain endocrine functionalities, also known as hormone levels. It was found that stevia can increase overall levels of progesterone, which is an essential hormone involved in the menstrual cycle as well as pregnancy. Significantly altering levels of progesterone in both men and women is definitely not a good thing unless done so for specific reasons. So what are my final thoughts about stevia? Although this is a very low calorie sweetener and does actually taste pretty good with no net carbs, I would say based on all of the literature, the risks actually outweigh the benefits. There are also better ways to get that sweet taste in food, like using 100% raw unfiltered honey. Also eating sweet things like fruit have actually been shown to lower your overall fasting glucose levels as well as help with mental health. There's a saying in nutrition that I like to adhere to, and that is stick to the foods in the package that God intended them to be used in. I would definitely give Stevia a no in terms of overall health benefits. I hope you liked this video and learned something new. If you have any questions at all about Stevia or any other medical health related things, please leave a comment down below or get a hold of me by email. As always, everyone, stay healthy, eat whole foods, and I will see you all on the next one.